listening. Thank you for joining us today for the Artist Talk with Sarah Kahn. My name is Amelia and I'm an art teacher at Artists for Kids. I would like to begin by thanking the Coast Salish people, specifically the Squamish Nation and tsleil Nation, on whose unceded traditional territory the North Vancouver School District and Artists for Kids resides. In just a few moments, I'll be passing things over to Sarah Kahn. This morning, Sarah Kahn will share an artist talk and will discuss her art, her process, her inspiration and techniques. And in March, she will be joining us at Artist for Kids in person as an artist in residence. And she will work with senior art students from across the school district for two school days. Sarah Khan was born in England, raised in Pakistan, and is now based in Vancouver and she creates paintings that explore her relationship to absence and presence, as well as identity and culture. She holds a BFA with honors from the National College of Arts in Lahore, and her works have been featured in several national and international group exhibitions. You can see her work currently on exhibit in Vancouver at the Burrard Arts Foundation until March 19th. And this morning, Sarah is joining us from Pakistan, So fingers crossed that our internet connection will hold. And while I'd love for us to have the opportunity to all be connecting in person, I'm also really grateful that we're able to connect with Sarah this morning, despite the vast geographic distance between us. And with that, I will now pass things over to you, Sarah. So um, I grew up with a very supportive family. Um, I, I was very lucky that way. I feel like a lot of artists have um, pr- problems. They need to fight for uh, what they want to do. Uh, touch wood. Um, I was very lucky as a kid. Um, I think uh, all of us as kids love to draw and paint, and a lot of us uh, miss out because we're not encouraged enough. My father would bring us these beautiful illustrated children's storybooks. My mother would always provide me with crayons and paper. I think. These days, you know, we have these tablets and phones and stuff, which um, we pass to our, a lot of people pass to their kids uh, when uh, kids are distracted, when they need the kid to be distracted or when you go to a friend's house and the kid doesn't have anything to do. Um, my parents, my mother would always just pass me a notepad. So I think from the very beginning, I loved drawing and painting. And then the illustrated children's books were, I think, a huge inspiration from the very beginning and took a hold. And um, it, it was like a seed that grew uh, in me uh, for telling stories and especially illustrate, uh, like uh, creating illustrative work. Um I was also very, like, uh, in Pakistan, I grew up was surrounded by a lot of people, a lot of cousins. I was, I grew up in a joint family system. I had a lot of cousins around me, my siblings, of course, and then um, a lot of, which meant there were a lot of stories around me, people's stories around me. So I think that's also something that has always been um, a large, like a big part um, um, of the storytelling element uh, I think is there. This is uh, one of my paintings that my uncle still has in his house. Um, I used to love uh, getting my cousins uh, to draw and paint as well. And then we'd have yard sales with our drawings and bookmarks and postcards. And um, one of my aunts sent me this picture because this one is still up in their house. I think I was eight when I when I made that one. Um, so basically, just to give you an idea, I was one of those lucky kids who were, who were very encouraged. I think it's um, it's very hard when you your heart desires uh, painting and drawing and creative work and you're not um, encouraged. It's very, very important to encourage kids, especially. Um, it's such a good way to channel their energies, I think, sports and, and arts and creativity. Um, I was also encouraged to go to art school uh, once I was uh, older. So I went to art college and I, as much as I really enjoyed art college, I wasn't, um, I, I, I feel like I gathered a lot of um, art college hangups Um in the sense that I think whatever is very popular at that time, at the time you're at art college, that is really encouraged. For example, in our time, um, uh, uh, large-scale oil paintings were the the serious, um, the like it was the serious thing to do. 
um, that is how you would get into art galleries and that is how you would get into um, museums. So it, everybody was encouraged to do large scale oil paintings. As much as I really enjoyed um, developing my skills um, in art college and um, oil painting, I loved oil painting. Um, I think uh, I, I uh, there's a few other elements that um, pulled me more, fascinated me more. Like, for example, storytelling, uh, stories of people around me, um, uh, even uh, smaller, smaller scale uh, scaled work. Uh, but I don't think I got to uh, really discover that in art college. I did get to... Um, Obviously, in our college, you're exposed to a lot of art. So I did get to see uh, or, or see a lot of artwork that I really, really loved and fascinated me. Um, in the next few slides, we'll show you uh, Kara Walker. I fell in love with Kara Walker because her um, the storytelling was extensive and um, it's one of my old oil paintings in art college, just to sort of give you an idea how much I uh, enjoyed the actual uh, skill and the, the, the way the paint worked, um, how you could layer it up. And uh, the slow process sort of allows you to develop it slowly, um, the slow drying process. Um, but I think, uh, as you will see in the next slide, I enjoy uh, telling stories uh, through my work, and I love uh, actually taking from uh, taking stuff from around me, um, references from around me, um, talking about what's going on uh, uh, directly around me, like you know the kind of relationships I have with the people around me, my friends, what they're thinking about, what they're going through, uh, what they're talking about. So here, I think I started figuring that out, but I didn't get a chance to discover that in art college. Um, but like I was saying, I did find um, what inspired me. I think the next slide is of Kara Walker, uh, one of her uh, pieces. Um, I, 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 was, I was crazy about uh, this uh, installation of hers. I just think uh, it's, so, it's so incredible how in, with, in such a simple way, um, oil painting is so elaborate, but in, it, her, with her, with her silhouette, in such a simple way, she talks about so much. Um, and I, I thought that was incredible. So this car walker, I loved Marlene Dumas' way of painting. It was effortless, the way she used to paint. Um, and then obviously people like Goya, uh, I felt the, the, the darkness and the um, uh, did, his work was so dramatic and dark, but still so beautiful. Sometimes so ugly, but still so beautiful. Like the faces would be so distorted and weird, and the the the, the fairy tales. I think they were the you know the the, the dreams that he illustrated. Um, so 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 I think that is something I discovered in art college. But I also developed some art college hangups, which which took a while to get rid of because you know. Um, as a young person, I think you take a lot in whatever your teachers are saying. You you're taking it as uh, um, you take you 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 believe it's very very important. Some of it is very important as well, but a lot of it you feel um, uh, uh, you take it as the done thing that you have to do it this way otherwise. And with art, you have to remember as you grow older, you realize. We're doing this because we love it. So you must, it must come from your heart. Um, it took me a while to come to that point, um, realizing that um, whatever I'm doing, um, it, it needs to come from my heart for it to have an effect. So um, uh, I think over the few years after college, I had to take uh, some time to rethink uh, what I actually wanted to do. Uh, 
um, I did a few more oil paintings and I took them to my art advisor and she said, you've regressed since art college, which was quite painful to hear. Uh, and she reminded me what my interest, what was, uh, in, in, while I was there, what had pulled me, what had attracted me, it had, what my strengths were, like, you know, uh, expressions, people's expressions, body languages, people's stories, etc. So then I started doing a lot of drawing um, at home, a lot of sketches and drawings, and I started using quicker mediums. I had always loved um, watercolor painting in, in school. So I started playing around with charcoal and watercolors and inks. I had actually, I didn't get a chance to do watercolor yet. This was when I was still in Pakistan and I was using a lot of charcoal and uh, mixing it up with inks and layering it up. And I like to do the, uh, at this point, I started, uh, started, started, getting, started getting interested in creating perspective and stuff through layers, um, depth through layers, because I love the idea of how um, it's like um, a lot of uh, uh, layers and a lot of different perspectives make a complete story. And I love that idea of like um, a different um, viewpoint can change the whole narrative. Um, I also started thinking of um, instead of getting sucked into that, you know, the, the canvas painting is uh, real art. Uh, it needs to be. Um, about social issues and politics and stuff, I started thinking about my own stories and what was surrounding me again. Um, so instead of getting sucked into the old, the old college hangups, I started thinking about what I was interested in, what uh, stories I was interested in and directly linked to, because then it would come from the heart. Um, I was uh, really, this one of, this one, for example, I was really in love with my friend's daughter and so I was almost dependent on her little daughter for, uh, I'd get cheered up when I'd see her. Um, and when I actually thought about that whole idea, I felt like I was almost like a burden on the little kid and I felt really awful about it. Um, so relationships really fascinated me. I started looking into those more. I think the next few slides are also, the next slide is also uh, uh, depicts uh I, I also looked to books. Um, there were certain authors that resonated with me more. Uh, there were certain uh, stories that resonated with me more. This this was um, called uh, Keep Your Yuka Root, Root to Yourself. There's a book by Isabella Yande um, that I really uh, fell in love with. And uh, in that, uh, an, an older lady warns this young girl to stay away from men because they have a yuka root um uh between their legs and they can put uh, they can put demons inside you or something like that so a lot of these kind of stories that resonated the ordinary things that were really fascinating i'd write down quotes i uh, started making notes to sort of see where my heart really was where, what my interest interests really were uh, instead of thinking about all these things that you start thinking about what will be popular or what is the market asking for or what I started thinking more about what was important to me. So I'd make a lot of notes and do a lot of sketches and drawings, um, uh, the, uh, jot down quotes from books and stuff. And then uh, finally, so, so some of the paintings would even come from discussions from uh, discussions I've had with my family. Um, I think the next one is a discussion I had. The next slide will depict a discussion I had with my husband. I was talking to him and asking him, uh, what if uh, I, this was way before I had my daughter, what if I got pregnant and had babies, but instead of babies, there were kittens. And then we started talking about how then we wouldn't have one, we'd have like a, a bunch and we wouldn't have a stroller. We'd have like one of those um, supermarket trolleys to, to take them around down. So the, the random discussions, some of them can be very serious. Some of them can be very, very um, uh, silly and funny. Um, but I, they, it would start with doing like smaller sketches and drawings of uh, uh, like a mixture of all of these things, notes and drawings and um, um, uh, thoughts and discussions. Um, 
so it took a while um, to get rid of all the college hangups um, and uh, com- uh, coming up with stuff that actually mattered to me and then uh, coming up with larger more complex stories and more complex paintings. I also realized that I really, really, um, so, so, so that depicts the, that depicts the, um, my process quite well, um, this photo. Um, I do a lot of like sketches and smaller drawings and uh, I, I use mylar as well to see how they sit with each other. And then I put them together to see how a co- composition would work, a larger larger composition would work. Um, I also started realizing I, my love for watercolor. I re- I've always loved watercolor. It's the first medium I used in, back in school, in grade eight or nine. And then I used it throughout high school, but then I stopped when I went to uh, art college. And uh, once I was in Vancouver, I went back to it, and I really, really realized how much I love it and how much I like to use it in different ways. Um, and, and sometimes you can use it, like I, I, I'm able to manipulate it really, I feel, uh, to, to, my, to my heart's content. Uh, sharper edges, very watery. Um, and that allowed me to do, um, to, to tell stories with that same, like different layers and uh, complex um, compositions um things that are sort of falling into and out of focus um uh, i also uh, enjoy doing a lot of collage work uh from my preparatory smaller sketches and drawings that also helps me to give a different kind of texture uh to the larger uh, larger paintings another thing that's always fascinated me um Back in school, back in college, I remember reading um, A Hundred Years of Solitude and I fell in love with magic realism. Um, and I uh, love that idea of ordinary things uh, being turned into fantastical things or being turned into something really spectacular. Uh, just everyday, uh, just like I said, discussions and everyday moments that you share with your family. Now I have a toddler, I even watch her doing uh, funny things, and I and, and I'm in awe of how they learn and pick up things. So turning those into something more, more fantastical, uh, more ex, like extraordinary, I, I enjoy uh, um, doing that through my narratives and paintings as well. Um, wa- watercolor works quite well for the kind of stuff I want to do, uh, mainly because of how uh, crisp and loose I can. Uh, make it work and then also I love how um it, it you sort of have to cajole it um I recently used for my Bar- Barad Arts uh, Foundation residency I use acrylics I've always uh, steer clear acrylics I, f- I find them too goopy and sticky I, I use them for uh, for uh, murals and I just don't enjoy the way they move you just you really have to push them to do something with watercolor I love how they're like um you sort of have to cajole them to do the things you want them to do so um uh it's it's almost like you know like little kids you sort of have to um you can't force them to do things you just have to sort of like slowly get them to do things and um I, I I love that aspect of watercolors. Um, I feel like they teach me something new every day because of the way they work. Um, basically, that's my process. Um, I would say, um, uh, and and that's where the uh, the inspiration and, and stuff comes from. Um, I uh, do. You, Emily, do you feel? Um, I've missed out on anything, or if I could, do you still feel I could should elaborate on anything? No, thank you so much for uh, these insights. Uh, uh, sorry, pronouncing think... your name correctly. Yeah, yeah, Amelia. Uh, okay. no, Amelia, sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah no, it's all good. Thank you. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I have to. I'll pipe up right now and just say I find it to be such a gift to hear about your process like going even so far back to childhood and I think as I mean I maybe can speak 
for others here as educators of young young people, it's just so interesting to kind of hear where you've come from and kind of the, you know, the bits and pieces that have stayed with you and then your process coming out of college and that sort of thing. I find it fascinating. So thank you for sharing, like going kind of rewinding so far back and sharing those kind thank of. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. It's so fascinating. It <laughs> and, and I know I, I would I know there are more slides. I'm kind of glancing behind me and I I know um, others might enjoy kind of if we can move forward even a little bit. But if we were able to go through a few more of the slides and if you could speak a little bit more to some of your current um, work and process, um, yes. I would love that personally. And I think others would really enjoy seeing um, these more current current works if you're okay with that and have a bit more of time of course yes, okay. yes yes thank you um once I started figuring out um my process with like the sketches and the drawings and how it's almost like journaling at first it's like journaling um um putting everything um down like notes and then seeing how it comes how it would form like a larger composition um I started thinking about what um uh, the most important things to me uh what what, what the, the um what do you call it uh the phase in my life that I was going through and what ma things mattered because I think I'd moved away from Pakistan a lot of things fell into perspective when you move away you start uh thinking about um how you process things what things matter to you things sort of get sifted and the things that matter to you most come to the surface and i was thinking a lot about relationships at the at the beginning um of my time in vancouver so i was thinking about uh, my childhood i was thinking about uh what my closest relationships mean to me and what they are mostly it's this one's called women's games mostly it's women i i love surrounding myself with women very, I have always had a, a touch wood large group of girlfriends who I sort of uh, d different uh, female friends that I turn to for different things. Um, but they're also very complicated. I feel a lot of the times there's a lot of um, like they're very um, you have to sort of balance things out. There are different personalities. You have to think about how um, how sensitive one of your friends is and how you need to speak to them about a certain things and certain things and then so some some people that are a little more laid back. So I started thinking about all these, um, the, the things that mattered to me most and Ubiquitous Follies came into being, which was my uh, first uh, show here in Vancouver. It knows about all these things. There was women's games was one of the paintings. Um, um, uh, ch Child's Play, which was the previous, um, uh, the previous slide. Uh, before women's games was about children's uh, games, the kind of imaginary games we play as 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 little kids, you know, sit, getting uh, into a bed and pretending it's a ship um, and there's water all around you or climbing trees and um, having adventures of that sort. But you always have these these adults lurking around you, keeping an eye on you, checking if everything's OK. So there were these... Um, uh, then there was one about uh, one was called um, this is called recycled. So this is dealing with death and how we become a part of um, how we go back into the earth, how we become a part, how we accumulate all these objects and all these things all through our lives. And then we become a part of the ground again. Um, you can see that cycle and the um symbolizing you know the um objects we we sort of um gather through our lives and then we become a part of the landscape itself so it's, uh, all of these things i find so fascinating and interesting how you know there's sort of the, the, this duplicity in everything um all these everyday uh things that we take for granted um so so and then there was uh one was called uh uh, this was called You Were Always There, um, and this was a little bit about, um, uh, th this was the second solo show I had in Vancouver. I had this in Surrey, the Surrey Art Gallery. And this was a lot about, um, at, in th through this phase of um, my life, I was thinking a lot about Vancouver and Pakistan, um, Vancouver and Lahore, and how um, they had started to come together to form one entity or, or, or one um, space in my head, 
because I felt like I belonged to both by then. I I think spent about five years in Vancouver and I started feeling like it started feeling like home. Um, so this was um, I just found it fascinating before before moving to Canada. I'd never even thought about Canada. I used to live in Lahore. I used to love Lahore. I'd visit uh, Europe because it was closer uh, and because I had uh, links to England, of course. But I'd never thought of Canada. And I'd never, I didn't, I don't think I knew there was a city called Vancouver, but um, I'd never thought of it. And so I created this whole, this visual with um, there's Lahore. And Lahore is a very like hot city. So I wanted to give it like, um, so like a heat and then there's like I'd fall in love with Vancouver and you know there's this feeling you get with um with these uh, with like once you move from one place to another there's this feeling of you also feel a bit like you've uh, like um you feel a bit disloyal um because you fall in love with another city and, and I didn't think I could live without Lahore so I wanted to sort of embrace the fact that I'd fallen in love with Vancouver which is this green almost paradise type place um, through that door and the fact that it always existed it's just that I didn't know about it um, my husband I didn't know my husband till I met him in my uh, late 20s uh, I was about to be 30 uh, but he was always there it's just I, I find that idea interesting as well. Um, so, so this particular body of work, uh, which I uh, completed in 2019, I think. Um, I think by then I was pregnant as well, so I was thinking a lot about uh, both the places and how um, they're both home to me and how I feel sort of torn between the two, but I also feel... Um, they make me who I am. Um, I identify with both of them. Um, I don't know where my real life is. I don't know um, if I if my life in Vancouver is a real one or if my life in Lahore is a real one. They both, though, um, I feel more and more. Uh, you can be a part of both places. Um, I also love doing these... Um, um, creating uh, figures uh, with uh, uh, the same idea of, you know, um, two complete uh, opposing matters coming together to form one, um, two complete opposites coming together to form one. This one was called, this one's called portrait. This one was also a little bit about how we keep filling the earth with um this wasn't a part of a body of work this was more uh this was separate um but this was more about um how the uh, although we keep wrecking the earth by filling it up with all of this matter um uh, it at the end of the day we we can't do anything to destroy it um uh, if we were destroyed tomorrow it'll rejuvenate itself and regrow and come back together so um this was, was more about that this was a separate painting that i did um that i i personally really love but i feel like there's i'm, I'm going to make more um connected to this one i think there might be a few more of figures sort of um almost being patched together even this one there's like a, a little bit of patchwork happening, uh, happening a little bit of like quilting happening uh, with my patterns and putting them together and forming uh, one complete whole. I love that idea as well, forming that one whole with bits and pieces of different things, how we are like not one entity. I think after post uh, having a child, um, becoming a mother, I started feeling like, um we're not just one thing um i am many things i'm not just a mother i think we have that struggle in the beginning of where we feel like we're just a mom because we're constantly feeding constantly taking care when a baby is so tiny it's very hard to sort of um leave them they're just sort of uh 
I mean, when they're, in the, they're when they're in your tummy, you don't have to do anything. They're just a part of you. Um, once they're out, the the workload becomes huge. You have to constantly take care of them. So I think that uh, you have that struggle where you feel like you're only a mum, uh, but you have to that you have to remind yourself you are not just a mum. You have other identities, and it's okay. Um, so so these um, as they they prog- uh, like the previous painting and then this uh, they were they started. Um, going more towards specifically the phase that I'd found myself in, which was motherhood. Um, uh, How we sort of, uh, although we're very, very um, bogged down with the day-to-day, we're constantly growing as well. Although, you know, you don't even realize, especially I felt that during the first year of motherhood, I grew so much and I gave myself no credit because you're so distracted by the constant responsibility and the constant taking care. Um, these were a lot about growth as well and transformation, how uh, you change, um, how you have you how you found find different. Uh, like I didn't feel like I needed a support system before I had my daughter in Vancouver, uh, but once I had my daughter. Um, I craved my village back in Lahore so much. Um, I'd never felt so dependent on them before or through my five, six years in Vancouver. So I started feeling like I needed to regrow or um, find a new village for my daughter and I because I felt so isolated without. Um, so this was these were more about, you know, rejuvenation and regrowth and um, um, uh, new uh, roots. Um, I think uh, there might be a few more, maybe. And, and then I found new ways of um, talking more about motherhood and and its duplicity and how sometimes you um, sometimes you go crazy uh, because they drive you nuts because they need so much and uh, sometimes it's all joy. Like to be honest, uh, it, it's insane. Nobody can explain or express to you the joy that it brings. You have to experience it. Um, but I, it, it, it's the same that I, I sometimes feel like that's probably why some people have that instinct. They they feel like yes, we have to be a parent, and some people don't, because some of us really crave that those two extremes. Um, to understand the entire perspective. Some of us get that perspective uh, without, but some of us need that entire spectrum of the extremes, um, the joy and the madness of parenthood. Um, That's how we really um, uh, enjoy life uh, after seeing those two extremes or witnessing or experiencing those two extremes. Um, So yeah, so I did this uh, fabric installation um, with that in mind um, and then this was my last show uh, that I did in the summer which was more mostly about um, motherhood um, growing new roots transformation um, finding a new a new village here um, and then I had my and then the uh, Barad Arts Residency uh, is a, the the most recent show which you can actually go check out. Yes, as as Amelia was saying, um, and that was more about discovering new mediums because I wanted to see what more I could do with a different medium, acrylics and drawing and large scale drawing with crayon. I just really want to thank you again, Sarah. I jotted down so many notes here i know someone else also noted like loving this idea of how you cajole the watercolors and how you can't force them <laughs> sort of like children that's such an, <laughs> a, a good analogy i think as all a, parents should do watercolors <laughs> yeah as a mom and a teacher i think that's a good sort of mantra to keep in mind so i, I like that one and a lot of other things i've noted down here so i have to say i'm really thrilled for um when you come here to artists for kids in person yes. to work with I'm very excited for March. And just thank you again for making the time and um, navigating this whole uh, time difference and everything to join us. I think um, 
that really meant a lot to all of us this morning. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.